Welcome to another edition of the Bible in the News. This is Tim Billington joining you. We look this week at the events in Yemen, Putin's recent visit to the Pope at the Vatican, and we'll also comment on the computer virus that was found to be monitoring the Iranian nuclear talks. We'll start then by looking at Yemen. Why is Yemen interesting? Why would we as Bible students be interested in looking at Yemen? Yemen is the core of what was ancient Sheba or the Sabaeans. And Sheba and the Sabaeans are mentioned in Bible prophecy, two places in particular, Joel chapter 3 and Ezekiel chapter 38. So Ezekiel chapter 38, it comes up in verse 13, says, Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish with all the young lines thereof shall say unto thee, that thee, of course, is the northern invader that is coming down that's described in the first couple of verses of the chapter. Art thou come to take a spoil? Hast thou gathered thy company to take a prey, to carry away silver and gold, to take away cattle and goods, to take a great spoil? The Sheba then is the first country that's mentioned in this group of nations that are protesting the invasion that is coming down into the land of Israel. So they're on the side of the protest when Gog comes down and they're allied with Dedan, which would be northern Arabia, and the traders of Tarshish. And then Yemen comes up again in Joel, Joel chapter 3 and verse 8. I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Judah, and they shall sell them to the Sabaeans, to a people far off, for the Lord, Yahweh, hath spoken it. I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Judah, and they shall sell them to the Sabaeans. So what exactly is this selling that is going on? What does it mean to sell somebody? Let's have a look at the context right around Joel chapter 3 and that verse we just read. So we just read verse 8. We will skip back to verse 6. So Joel chapter 3 verse 6, The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians, that ye might remove them far off from their border. Behold, I will raise them out of the place whither ye have sold them and will return your recompense upon your own head and I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Judah and they shall sell them to the Sabaeans to a people far off for Yahweh hath spoken it. So it seems to have to do with removing people from their land because verse 6 said, The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians, that ye might remove them far from their border. So that was their intention, was to sell them to the Grecians, they might remove them far from their border. But verse 8 says, I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Judah, and they shall sell them to the Sabaeans, to a people far off, for Yahweh hath spoken it. A possible interpretation of that would be that these children of Philistia that it is talking about will be removed into the area of Sheba. Exactly what that selling means, it's hard to say for sure, but it is interesting to think about and consider. But meanwhile at the Vatican, supposedly isolated Putin visits the Pope. He gets only a mild exhortation about his antics in the Ukraine, where he's annexed part of it and is backing a rebellion in another part of it that's causing much bloodshed. So Russia has annexed Crimea, an area of Ukraine, and Putin is, as we've said, backing a rebellion in part of what remains of the rest of Ukraine. Ukraine, interestingly, is the heartland of the ancient Scythians, or in the Bible we read Magog, that's the same area. Although Scythia had much of Eastern Europe in its control at its peak, Crimea was really their home turf. It's kind of the area where they started out from, and it's the area they were driven back to as they were um, subdued as history went on. Wednesday, June 10th was the day that the Pope had Putin over to the Vatican. That was just a day after he was left out in the cold by the G7 or 6, I suppose you could say, leaders, as he was unwelcome over the Ukraine. But he had a friendly exchange in the Vatican. They exchanged gifts, and Putin was given an Angel of Peace medallion. So on June 10th, Pope Francis reportedly told Putin he needed to be serious about peace in the Ukraine. 
And just today, Putin is calling for the Ukraine to stick to the signed accords from February, the signed peace accords, which includes greater freedom for the rebel-held areas and that there should be local elections held there. And Putin claims there will be peace when that happens. Now, if he's not involved in the region, exactly how he knows there will be peace, it's not exactly sure, as he claims that he isn't involved, but all reports are that he is sending troops over to back the rebellion. So he wants to see the area that um, is pro-Russian have more freedom and elections, which I suppose would sort of cement the situation as it is, rather than um, how much of the world would like him to give back all of the Ukraine to the Ukrainian government. So why is this interesting? Well, it's interesting because, um, well, in Ezekiel 38, we have Gog of the land of Magog right off the bat at the beginning. So um, Magog is a very key part of that northern confederacy. But we have two legs in Daniel chapter 2 of the image. We have an east and a west. And the pope is, in a way, the head of that western. He's, he will ride to that beast and he is cozy with Putin, who is, of course, the Eastern political leader. And um, Daniel chapter 11, verses 37 to 39 in particular, see a north-south division in the latter days, rather than an east-west division. So rather than an east-west division, where we've got, as it would be today, the European Union and Russia, rather than them being at each other's throats, we have them joined together and attacking nations to the south. In Revelation chapter 16, we have the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet all speaking together with one frog spirit-like voice. And Ezekiel 38, they are all united together against Israel. So we would expect to see the east and the west coming together in Europe, but leaving the United States and some southern nations out in the cold. So Israel is not very pleased with the nuclear talks that are going on, primarily between the United States, but against six world powers, discussing with Iran their nuclear ambitions and trying to curtail them from developing a bomb. Israel thinks that they're being too lenient on Iran and are just paving the way for them to actually build a bomb. And it's just come out that there is a virus that was in the computer systems of some hotels where these nuclear talks had taken place and the virus allowed the hacker to eavesdrop on conversations, steal electronic files, operate microphones in the elevators, computers, and alarm systems. The virus is related to the Stuxnet virus that attacked Iran's nuclear centrifuges and caused them damage. So we see interesting things going on in the world. We see the Arab nations dividing north and south. Although much of Europe is opposed to what Putin is doing, the Pope is having him over for a visit at the Vatican, and we see them potentially getting closer together. Uh, Putin is trying to cement his position in the Ukraine, which is interesting, as that is part of Magog. And Magog, of course, is uh, key in the collection of nations that are mentioned in Ezekiel chapter 38. So thank you for joining us for the Bible and the news this week, and we will talk to you again next week, God willing.